Hi, and welcome to another Java application tutorial for Java Enterprise. In this program, we're going to create what's called a REST service. And you can see on the screen, JSON stands for uh, JavaScript Object Notation. And we have ourselves uh, all the records in our database, as you can probably remember. And so this is what the code will look like when we are done with our application. We're going to have some extra pathways in their URL, such as get JSON or get JSON by ID or get JSON by name or even get XML. So let's try each one of these out before we begin programming. So you can see I have in the URL rest things JSON or get JSON. If I were to change the URL to get JSON by ID and then add a number, such as number nine here, number nine should get the kitties, and there they are. I think I had a few other ones, such as 19, which was popcorn. I can also search JSON by name, and so if I search anything with a letter K in it, I get chocolate, kitties, and kinds. I can also change for dark and have very dark chocolate. So you can see that the JSON by name is searching the title. Also, I've programmed the uh, get XML service. And we have a different kind of service. This is the uh, format XML in the same data as before. I'm going to start by copying a previous version of my code, the uh, web application after the improvements video. So the previous. And let's do a paste. And let's call this thing uh, REST services. And I'm going to call it number two because I've already made a one. Let's expand services and let's see what we have to change first of all. The first thing we have to do is we have to right click on the project and go to properties. We are going to choose project facets and we have to check mark this which is JAXRS. RS is REST services. Let's apply and close it. We have to set up some services in a XML file. Find the web XML file and open it. We're going to add a servlet. You can already see that we have the faces servlet and the uh, pattern for faces is uh, slash faces. So if you remember from our application, the URL starts with faces and then the name of the file. So we're going to add a new servlet and then add a pattern for its uh, REST services. So let's choose Add here. The servlet name, we can call it anything we want. So I'm going to call it REST Easy Servlet. And uh, we're going to check for a servlet class here. Let's browse. What I'm looking for is the HTTP Servlet Dispatcher. And if I type along here, I get Servlet Dispatcher. And let's click Finish. Very nice. Let's go check the source for our file here. So you can see I've just added this section, the Servlet, for the REST Easy Servlet. So let's click on the folder called Servlets up here. So now in this Servlet mappings, I want to add a pathway for all REST services. So let's choose the Add button. Servlet name is our first choice, and we will select Rest Easy Servlet. Now, the path name. You can use any path name you like, but let's use the uh, path forward slash rest forward slash star. So anything that comes in our URL with rest will be handled by this servlet. Let's go look in the source. And so you can see that servlet mapping has been added. There's a couple more parameters that we need to set up here, so just type along with me. We're going to, first of all, select the parameter called context param, and we're going to give this thing the uh, param name next. So let's press enter, param name, and the name that we're looking for is called rest easy scan. That means the web server is going to be expecting someone to type in the URL. So the param value that we're going to select is true. So that's a parameter that means we're going to be scanning for URLs that have the REST service in them. We have another parameter. 
it's called context param and let's put in here uh, enter okay we need a parameter name so let's type param name and the param name on this thing is going to be called rest easy servlet dot mapping dot prefix so this is another parameter that the uh, server needs and the value is called parameter value and the prefix for all of our rest services is the word rest okay so with those settings our rest service should be working so let's close web xml and save the changes so the next thing we need to do is create a class that will respond to URLs that are REST service formatted. So let's go into our business section here, and we're going to add a new class here. So let's do a right click here, choose new, and we are looking for a JAX RS resource. Let's give it a name here. Let's call it Things REST Service. It's going to be set up to handle the JSON and the XML data types. Let's click Next. I'm going to skip the application creation here and we're going to make our own. So let's click Finish. Looks to me like they've given us some starter code here. So this says our REST service produces XML and JSON code. It also consumes it. So it can read and write to JSON data. So now we're going to specify the path name for what REST services are used here. Let's go back to our application that was running just a minute ago. You can see that the URL is going to be REST and then the next URL or the next slash is going to be the word THINGS and then we have the actual function name. So we got REST service and then the path name here. So that's the word THINGS. So in here I'm going to put a forward slash and then the word THINGS. You can use other things besides THINGS but I have an app that talks about beautiful things. Alright, so let's do some coding now down here in the REST service. First of all, we're going to do a GET statement. And the GET statement is going to say what is the URL path name? That's the first thing. So let's say GET JSON is a good uh, path name. And that'll get everything in our service. So let's put in a comment there is GET ALL RECORDS and display them in JSON format. Okay, now after we put the decorators in, we need to say the, uh, what this is going to produce. So produces, what kind of file format? Now there is a special predefined media type, it's called. Let's type in media type dot, and then you can see the different kinds of media types that are available. So we're looking for something called application JSON. So you can either type that out or use the type ahead menus. All right, finally, now we get to our, our function. So public, and uh, let's say get all things. And let's see, we'll call it as JSON. And so that will return all of our records. Now we need to have a type that is returned. So we're going to return a list of type beautiful thing. So it looks like we have some imports to make this work. So let's do the lists. Beautiful thing needs to be imported from the beans area. The get value needs to be imported as well. So now what are, where are we going to get these things? Well, we need to use our business service to be able to return these items. So let's go and import our business service. So let's use the inject operator here. And so the service that we're looking for is the business service interface and let's give it a name let's call it BS it looks like inject needs to be imported so now we can use our business service BS dot and did we have something called read all we did and read all should return a list so let's type in the word return in front of that and now we have our service for reading everything this might just work. Let's go run our program. So let's do run as, run on server. Okay, you can see that the application's running. 
Now let's take a look at the pathways. So we first of all have to use the word rest, followed by things, followed by get JSON. So let's try that in here. So we're going to erase the word faces, type in rest, and then type in things, and get JSON. And there we have a bunch of JSON data. Now it doesn't look very nice. I'm going to copy this and put it into another web browser. So copy here. Let's switch out to Chrome. I'm going to close this version, open up a new tab, and paste our current. And there it is. So your, your uh, data might not be formatted quite so nicely. If you look in my plugins, I have a plugin up here called uh, JSON Formatter. And let's see what JSON Formatter brings us to. So here's the link for uh, GitHub to uh, JSON Formatter. It's a Chrome extension. You install it, and your JSON data is nice and formatted. So if you don't have good formatted JSON data, go find a JSON Formatter. Okay, let's return to our app. So let's add a new uh, function. So I'm going to copy the existing one and paste it. So we're going to change a few things. So instead of get JSON, we're going to say get XML. And the format for the data is not JSON format anymore. Let's uh, change that to dot application. Should be XML in here somewhere. XML. All right, so XML works a little differently. So in our return statement, we're going to have a, an array here. So instead of a list, we have the square brackets for array. And our format or our name is XML. Now we're going to return data from our database and have to change its uh, output here. So let's, let's delete the inside. We're going to make a new list. Let's call it a list of beautiful thing. And let's call it things. And we're going to type in bs dot read all again. Now we just have to cast this into a different data format. So we're going to we're going to cast this to an array. So then the size. So then this array is going to take a a beautiful thing array, the size of the uh, list that we got from our database, and we'll return that. Now I think this will give us an error, but let's try it anyway. So just testing here, I'm going to type in the rest slash things and then get JSON. So get JSON seems to work. I'm going to erase the last three and type get XML. Now we have an issue. It says we got some kind of an application. I'm not sure what it is, but I have looked up the answer to know that we have to modify something in our program to make it print in XML format. Let's go back into our beans area and let's look at beautiful thing. We have to make one small change here. So in front of beautiful thing we're going to put a decorator. So this annotation is going to be titled XML root element which basically says that we're going to be able to produce a list here in XML format. And let's give it a parameter called uh, let's give it a parameter called name equals and uh, we'll call it thing. All right. So if we import that, save the changes, and let's try and run this application again. All right, let's test out our work here. So we're going to put in the word, um, let's see, forward slash rest, things, let's type get JSON, test that, it seems to be working. Now let's type in get XML. And now we have uh, some data here. Format doesn't look that great. Let's uh, put it into Chrome, see if it looks better there. So I'll copy the URL, switch into Chrome, and let's see, delete that paste in the new XML and there is our format, the XML data. So you can see XML data is similar. It's more uh, verbose, you might say, a lot more text. 
but it works a lot like JSON data as well. All right, let's do a little bit more uh, formatting here. And we're done with the uh, first video here, so we can get all of the data from our database. So in the next video, we'll create some more uh, JSON services. Instead of just getting all of them, we're going to read by one record at a time or search by records. And that's going to take some coding back in our database uh, classes. So next time we'll do that.